actually benefit everyone is using it to their own nefarious outcome. Wow. Yes. Oh my God. Innocent. Like a lot of people want to go, Oh, it's innocent and it's unconscious. No, no, it's being done on purpose. Absolutely. I love this. You know, uh, I love what you're sharing. It reminds me, you know, I was in a relationship that actually was not good for me. You know, it was not good for me. And I used it in any, sp every single spiritual bias, Shanti, that you could imagine. I used it to, to, oh, but this is my process. This is how I heal my karma. It's okay. If he speaks poorly to me, I must have created it. All that bullshit, you know, yeah. all that stuff. I used it to keep myself in, in, I don't know, in, in a, in an, in apparent holy position, but guilty at the same time and not seeing my humanity. But, um, all that you are sharing, it, it really is, it, it reminds us, you know, some people are it's, doing yeah, shit. Things. If I'm treated like shit, it means that's where I'm going to grow. But guess what? I'm here to tell everybody. Yes. Have to be treated like shit. <laughs> you know uh -huh. how you not have to, everybody in life is going to go through some kind of hardship because that's just life. Yeah. That's not something, that's not you being punished by the universe. I, I used to believe that wholeheartedly. I couldn't make a move without being petrified. So it's not the hard things happen in life, but they don't happen in order for you to grow. You can grow through somebody caring about you and loving you and nourishing you and yeah. nurturing you through that guidance process. You don't, I, somebody yelling in my face is most likely to get punched in the face, not me to go, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. No, <laughs> yell in my face, there will be consequences. I'm not going to stand there. I probably won't punch anybody, but I will remove myself very quickly. Yes. And yes. anybody who thinks that talking to me badly or that tough love is a thing or that their criticism is welcome will find a not welcome sign on my side. I know I'm not here to learn when somebody treats me like shit. Somebody treats me like shit. That's on them. Yes. That oh shit treating. It's not happening because I did something. It's the same. Like there's one really core value that we carry in our household. And that is whatever's happening in your life. Because life happens. You're stressed out. You have a lot of tests. You're at work. You hate your boss. Uh, somebody kicked you at school. Um, you're sick, you're on your period, all, all the things, you know, you get a bill you don't like, all, all the feelings about all of that is completely valid and absolutely welcome here. There's more than enough room for that. What is not okay is that you take any of that and use it as an excuse to treat anyone else like shit, yes. including like not even treating yourself like shit. Wow. You can come and you can talk about all of those things. You can be held and heard and cared for. But what you can't do is treat somebody else badly because you had a bad day. Yes. Yeah, that sucks. That you, you know, it's just, that yeah. really sucks. You're, oh my god, I feel like and, it's therapy right now. Podcast as, therapy for Yvonne. <laughs> but it's but as a like it's the guiding value, and, and the, so my children have to learn to be responsible for their words, for their tones of voice, for their body language, but in a way that is not uh, like subjugating them or oppressing them, but allows them to take full responsibility for the way that they communicate. Hmm. So that they can actually be more freely expressed. Yes. 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 In a way that doesn't harm others. Absolutely. Ah, oh, I, I, you know, yes. All, all, all to all of the above. Yes. So, wow. Let's go to the next question. And I think we have a time for two more questions or three. Um, Dear Shanti, I'm, I belong all, all, all I belong to a group. I, I, become, I belong to a leadership group that claims that if I do what they say, I will attain X amount of money. But I've been there for five years and I have this consistent feeling that I never can do enough to reach the price that the group promotes. And each time I bring that into awareness or I want a refund for certain things that I pay extra besides of what I paid initially to join this group, I have to have to pay extra to go to the next level and to go to the next level and to go to the next level. Uh, what do I do with this feeling? I never feel enough. And when I reach out to them, it seems to be back at me of like, well, you are not doing the work. 
that's what she's saying. Translating it in the best of my abilities. <laughs> I'm gonna look. I'm gonna say something. Nobody has yeah. to. You, she, she doesn't have to take this. Leave. Yeah. They don't right. give a fuck about you. That's right. <laughs> that's a simple answer. You know. I'm thinking they, they don't care about you. No, you don't. They, there's no care yeah. for her. Look, I. Yeah face this a lot in the coaching industry where people wind up in my inbox because of somebody being uncaring and putting money before the human that's in front of them. And if somebody doesn't care about you, don't give them your money. And if somebody tells you you're not making this amount of money because you're not doing X, Y, Z, well, maybe X, Y, Z doesn't work for you. That you're not the problem. The strategy is the problem. But they're not going to tell you that because that doesn't keep you on the hook and keep paying them money. And the not enoughness that you feel, that is what they are trying to make you feel so that you stick around and keep giving them money. And it's utter bullshit. Oh, I, I tell you, it is. I'm seconding um, Shanti. Like, and, I'm, and, you know, and it's not, and I just want to say, it's not. It is not your fault that you're in there, but if you continue to stay there, it becomes your responsibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's okay <sighs> to leave. If you needed permission there, you know, now you got it. <laughs> yep. It, it, it is, you know. And it's hard to leave because there's weird culture, like the society, the, they build up community around this and yeah. that. Uh, and you probably have met people that you care about and that you love and you have relationships with and walking away is not just as easy as I'm making it sound, but it is necessary for your well-being. There is this, this gentleman, this gentleman, and when you were talking about a little bit about this, you know, of being part of a group and now you, you meet in the group people that you like. Mm -hmm. So uh, this gentleman, his name is Manuel. He says, you know, Yvonne, I've been part of a group, a great group for many, many years. Uh, in this group, I have been encouraged to, to do, you know, to dress in a certain way. So to keep the part of success, to talk in a certain way, to live by the rules of the group, which is okay. But however, I, in the process of this, I haven't been able to do a lot of the things that I wanted um, as they were apparently incompatible with the rules of the group. I'm having a um, challenge right now with my faith and by uh, with, with the instinct that I have that I have to move on from the group because of all the great people that I met in the group. And I feel that if I get out, I will be out of their lives too. Do you or Shanti have any advice for me? Sure. I've left a lot of groups. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oftentimes I work with people around boundaries and it's often when somebody becomes more clear in themselves that relationships in their life will fall away. That's more fact than it is, you know, like a, that's going to happen to people as they clarify within themselves because relationship dynamics are going to shift. So whether it's a group yeah. or an intimate relationship, the dynamics will shift. And there is a real um, risk, if you will, of losing those connections. That's real. And so I want to say that first because there's a real th loss that takes place when you walk away from a group of, of people that you've maybe had things in common with. And I've done this many, many times. And I've often been, you know, well entrenched and well involved in groups. And then I evolved in my own understanding of myself. And I was like, oh, I don't really need this anymore. I don't want to spend time here anymore. It doesn't work for me. And just left. And people were like, how can you do that after all that investment? It's because when I realize something doesn't work for my well-being, my well-being will trump everything. Mm. That will mean that I leave relationships behind. And that will mean I may spend a period of time without new ones. But having done this for a long, you know, over periods of time, it always makes room for real relationships that serve me in the present. And some people in some of those groups, I am still friends with. Not, you know, more than less than a handful but those are the people that were, would be my friends, whether we were in those groups or not. They Absolutely. were friends of me. They weren't friends with me because I was in the group. Yes. And that's the difference. 
If your friendship is only based on faith or like a certain church or a certain organization or a certain place, is that really friendship? Because to me, friendship, I it contained in the friendships that I am is my entirety of my whole self, not just the part that that person or that group wants to see, but the whole of me. Mm. Real friendship sees you for who you are and it lets you be all of it. So long as you're not treating people badly, I will put that caveat in there. Amen. Absolutely. Ooh, great, great answer and great question. And our last question for today, for this Shanti session, is um, I'm writing to you both with a lot of pain in my heart as I just discovered that someone I hired and I practically gave 50% of my company was uh, operating under a double moral standard, you know, pretended to be something, resume said something. Um, we accepted it. I believed it. And it turned out to be like conmanship. I'm yep. dealing with a lot of grief and stress about this. I just wanted to share if you have any advice for me as I feel really guilty for have accepted this person into our company. Okay. So I was scammed in 2016 for $20,000. Um, I'll start there just wow. so you know. I'm like, and, oh, I felt the yeah. pain. I felt the pain. Yeah. And it's funny. Oh. It's, well, it's funny. It's not funny at all. But what's interesting is the person has gone on to scam many, many, many other people. Yes. was invested by the FBI, all these things. I just want to give you that reference that like I've been scammed before. So, so I'm not talking out of my ass. Um, <laughs> and, but what, what happens if you've been scammed, it means you've been deeply manipulated. You've been used and abused and treated not well. And part of why scamming works is because when you, you feel ashamed, when you find out you've been scammed, built into the way you have been treated by the scam artist, by the way, it's a manipulative system. You feel ashamed and you don't want anybody to know and you feel like you're stupid, but scam artists don't scam stupid people. Stupid people are more likely to see through. And by stupid, I mean less intelligent. I'm not making any kind of a judgment, but they're more likely to see through the manipulative bullshit than a smart person is. Mm. The scam artist is always going to go through people who are smart, but also people who carry some kind of wounding, some kind of trauma, because that's where they hook in. So again, you are not responsible for having been scammed. The scam artist is responsible for scamming you. So the, the when you can separate those and people say, oh, but you know, there were so many red flags. What I love about that term is, isn't it interesting that you only see red flags when you turn around and look backwards? That's so true. Wow. You know, you know? and then you hold yeah. yourself responsible for shit you didn't know. You might have had an inkling. I'll tell you how it went yeah. for me. I had an inkling. Oh, something's kind of off. I ignored it. Some, it sounded, all the things that were being promised sounded really good, you know, and then, then there was like a little glitch in behavior. There was some weird kind of our um, negotiate some blip in the negotiation. And I'm like, this is weird. And then when I finally realized there was no product coming at the, the minute that I recognized, I pulled the plug and I'm sure this person did the same thing. The moment it became clear in your own body that this is not okay. You cut whatever you, you cut your losses. You got out of there the moment that you had all the epiphanies inside of you. And before that, you can't now, knowing what you know now, turn around and tell yourself you should have known because you didn't. You only became aware of the scam when you became aware of the scam. And that's the point that you took responsibility. And that's the only way and the only place you can take responsibility. Mm, the rest is on the side. Absolutely. And it's really painful. Like I had to decide, yeah. do I try to hunt this person down? I'm in Switzerland. They were in Canada. Um, and, and the company was, well, it was a fake company. It was California. It was like, it's going to cost me more money, time, and definitely my well-being to try to get that money back. And so I looked, I, I looked at that and I said, you know, I'd rather just put the work in to make that money back. Like in my own business. Yeah, you valued you valued your health, your well being more than 
Correct. Um, I was like, this is all, it had already stolen so much time from my family and my business and the things that I needed to be doing that I was like, I'm not going to give it another iota of my energy. That is such a, you know, that is so, that is such an important, um, an important awareness to bring into this table because 